When it comes to smartphones, LG has long been associated with the mid-range market, but with the G7 ThinkQ, the South Korean electronics giant is taking a page from Sony, pricing their latest flagship phone at $1,049, $90 more than Samsung's Galaxy S9 and Google's Pixel 2. Is it worth the extra cash? Let's find out. I'm Eric Emin Wood, and welcome to All Hands on Tech. LG is selling the G7 as a device that lets users geek harder, perhaps a tacit admission that it looks like every other smartphone on the surface, but has several unique features under the hood. The first and most prominent feature is a pair of 16 megapixel camera lenses in the back, one a standard angle lens and the other a super wide angle lens. These are paired with an AI powered sensor that has 19 different settings, including landscape, person, sunset, and baby. And while I couldn't find any of them, there are eight modes accessible from the top tab, making it easy to shoot video, including slow motion video, a panorama, or food. Most usefully, the sensor can tell when your surroundings are too dark and will automatically adjust the camera's brightness accordingly. However, you don't need to be a photography professional to know that megapixels aren't really a factor in the quality of your images. When it comes to smartphone cameras, the key number is the device's focal ratio, which for the G7 standard lens is 1.6 and the wide-angle lens is 1.9. By contrast, the 12-megapixel iPhone X's focal ratio is 2.4 and the 12-megapixel Galaxy S9 can switch between 1.5 and 2.4. And yes, higher ratio numbers tend to produce better photos. It's not the only factor. The Pixel 2's camera has a 1.8 ratio, and its photos look excellent too. But whatever the reason, photos taken with the G7 look like photos taken with a smartphone, unlike photos taken by the iPhone X, Galaxy S9, or Pixel 2, which at their best look like they were taken with an SLR. It doesn't help that the device's fingerprint sensor is right below the lens, and that my greasy fingers kept touching the lens when I meant to activate my phone. Another feature LG is using to sell the G7 is the sound. Even though it only has one speaker located in the bottom right, LG says the G7 uses its, quote, inner space as a resonance chamber to amp up the bass and deliver a premium, loud, and room-filling audio experience, and supports 7.1 channel surround sound. I'm not an audiophile, but the G7 is easy to hear, though I didn't hear any difference between its sound and the sound piped through any phone with a single speaker and I had noticed a difference when listening to the Galaxy S9's stereo speakers. That said, the G7 does have a headphone jack, and as someone firmly against Apple and Google phasing it out, I applaud LG for bucking the trend. The G7's main advantage over the competition, at least the ones I've used, is the 6.1 inch screen, which is at least half an inch larger than the iPhone X, S9, or Pixel 2, and makes it easier to hold. Its 18 by 9 display ratio is in line with other phones, and at 3,120 pixels by 1,440 pixels, it has a higher resolution display than the Galaxy S9, iPhone X, or Pixel 2. The G7 features a non-removable 3000 mAh battery, which compares well enough to the competition. The S9, which hasn't received high marks for its battery life, also has a 3000 mAh battery, and it's actually larger than the batteries offered on the Pixel 2 or the iPhone X. But just because it compares well to the competition doesn't mean we have to like it. I get two days of regular usage out of my BlackBerry Key 1. The G7 was usually down to 30% after a day. Spec-wise, the G7 runs on Android's 8.0 Oreo operating system, features a powerful Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 2.8 GHz octa-core processor, 4 GB of RAM, 64 GB of internal memory, an optional microSD slot, and both quick charge and wireless charging. It's also IP67 water resistant, a fact I can personally attest to since it continued to function after I dropped it into my kitchen sink though we still wouldn't recommend taking it swimming or into the shower. Finally, I don't know if it's a failure on my part or a quirk of Blackberry's or LG's versions of Android, but I had trouble migrating from my Key 1 to the G7. Though I made a backup file, for whatever reason the G7 said it couldn't find it. It also didn't restore any apps once I logged into my Google account, and once I reinstalled a few apps, it had issues opening certain files I tried to access with them. In the end, I find it hard to recommend the G7. 
It's a serviceable touchscreen phone if you like that sort of thing, but knowing that its base price is $90 more than the Galaxy S9 and Pixel 2, both of which run for a suggested retail price of $950, I can't imagine why you'd choose this device over a pair of devices widely acknowledged as among the best in the market. Thanks for watching All Hands on Tech. Let us know what you think of the LG G7 ThinQ in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe. Once again, my name is Eric Emmonwood. Thanks for watching.